Okay, I love that we're doing this. Yeah. I love how excited both of you were to be able to participate. So thank you. First of all, I know you're both very, very busy. Um, you just I'm not very busy. Oh yeah, no fighting for the world title in. No, like I don't do. Ten, I don't. Here's the thing. Eight like, days. How many hours a day you train? I mean, six to twelve is my my deal. Six. Yeah, he has a real job. You know, look at my fucking face. You think you could do this for twelve hours a day? No, no chance. Like you just pretty much, pretty much you train for max like two hours, Damn. and after that you just in the fetal position like I can't get out of bed everything <laughs> hurts I could relate though I was after gonna that. say I, I was mean just... after games I literally my ankles shoulders everything is but you I'm save playing. a lot of it for like you're 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 is the game work I mean you're doing games once a week yeah like, you're you're of heart yeah yeah I remember when I was a kid dude I'd like CPS come to my house I had so many bruises from just some junior all-american football like I mean I was fucked up yeah what's your football background Oh man, football background. I actually loved it. That was like my that was like my fucking dream. So I uh when I was from eight to freshman before I got kicked out of high school. Crazy, right? That was like that was like my end all be all. The okay. moment they said yeah. that I couldn't play football, I was like, fuck this, fuck you guys. Um but yeah, I loved it. Uh the thing I hated about it though, they didn't let you hit people. Especially later on in life, it became a lot more about being able to play football, less about hitting people. And now it's like they really transitioned to like, dude, I just went in and then I found it made. All we get to do is hit people. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not big enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not athletic enough. I'm going to go beat an MMA fighter. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I feel like that's the thing with football. Like it's definitely changed a lot over the years. Like back in the day, the Ray Lewis days, like you can literally, if there's a receiver coming across the middle. You can just spear him in the oh, head yeah. and knock him out cold. But now it's uh, they protect the offense a little but bit more. There's nothing wrong. Bro, no, I don't. Right. I mean, when I was a kid, that's what it was. You could do whatever you want. You yeah. could blindside people, do whatever. We but don't need that CT in our yeah, lives. Yeah, there's. I mean, when I was a couple a kid, movies came out. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> different now. Yeah. Bro, I'll just say, you guys, I met it at the players, and they're like, I got CT. And I'm like, listen, you guys, I've had. We're more, not gonna. I've had more concussions. And I've been knocked out than all you motherfuckers. I feel great. Okay. Amazing. We're going to not then, talk about that. Yeah, we're going to, yeah. So we're it's, all okay. it's all good. Listen, it's all good. Let's cut that part. Listen, that's a fancy it's all good. change there, bro. Is that okay. real? Yeah, that's real. Oh, I got to get a new fucking job, you guys. He's pro bowler Max Crosby, AP, all pro team. God that's a real. Damn it, man. Do you guys need, like, can I be a cheerleader? Like, how do oh, I get yeah. Raider Ed. Yeah. Yeah, Raider Yeah, Raider Ed. I'll be great. a fucking Raider Ed, you guys. <laughs> I want to talk about how you two. All the fucking bling I'm being blinded now, this motherfucker. Come make it feel like Let's a poor motherfucker. No, he's, I mean, just stay true to your roots. You <laughs> yeah, stay need, true to my roots. You don't need jewelry, you make good money. You don't need anything, yeah. Yeah, you're good. You got I this nice flip flops. Right? Yeah, leather yeah. flip flops, you're fine. Leather yeah, flip flops, I know. jeans. <laughs> okay. so All Walmart. We're living good, I yeah. mean. So, how did you two first have an interaction? I mean, I'll run this for yeah, you. I'll, I'll tell you yeah. like it is. I was at a fight. There's this gigantic white man in the audience <laughs> saying, like, kill that motherfucker, more or less. And Amen. I was like, I like this fucking guy. Yeah. Turns out he's this badass Raiders player that likes violence. Yeah. Like, I, I like this guy. It was pretty simple. Yeah, straight, straightforward. <laughs> I mean, I seen him fight at the Apex. Um, and I think I DM'd you after the fight. I'm like, you're, you're a yeah. savage, bro, and keep doing your thing. And that was, like, early, early on. I mean, I don't even remember who you were fighting at that at so that time yeah, it was early early on yeah, but I, I think it was like right when i came back from my knee <sighs> yeah wow. yeah it was yeah. it was right back when he got in the mix and uh you know dude you're like Washington. well you're like a real alec i'm not a you're like a bro, real athlete you're if you're fucking, fighting the ufc but you're no, but no no you're you're max fucking crosby bro you're on the oh, billboard you're on the stage hey, UFC I'm, just, champion, I'm just an ass who gets hit in the head I mean, so you see this guy i'm like oh man like that's who I wanted to be, but then I just ended up here because I couldn't go to school. <laughs> See, it's funny he says that. I mean, from the other perspective, if I was able to be the best fighter in the world, I feel like I might possibly go down that venue. You know what I mean? Go down that lane. So nah, it goes both it, ways. I feel like football players want to be fighters. The fighters want to be football players. Musicians want to be basketball players. You know what I mean? It kind of. No, but I will say, stuff. I will say, and I. Generally having sincere interaction with people is not my strong suit. I cry at movies, you guys. I'm a soft man. I try to hide that <laughs> But I will say I do enjoy how, how real he is as, a, uh, as an athlete. You know, it's so easy to fucking wear the gold chains and be like, I'm the best in the world. But it's, it's hard to admit that we have struggles. Mm -hmm. But not only to admit that we have struggles, to overcome these struggles. So, you know, most people, when they admit they have a struggle, they say, hey, I hit my wife and ran my red light because I have a struggle. And they use it as a scapegoat. You don't see many athletes saying, 
I have a struggle and I'm a better man. I'm a better husband. Mm-hmm. I'm a better father. I live better. And I saw something that's always resonated, resonated with me and Max was like, he admitted that he is a human. He makes a ton of money. Look at the fancy chain. You know, he, he is, he is a fucking, he is the man and he admits he has a struggle and it makes him a better person. Like, could you imagine being, being Max Schrock? Any woman he wants, all the money, you go Lamborghini, don't fucking matter. Any endorsement he wants, anything that Max wants, he can have. But what does he choose with that? He chooses to be a good dad, chooses to wake up four in the morning train. He's not getting DUIs. He's not, you know, he's not getting a DV charge. He's being a great man, a good man. And that's something that I, you know, as I, I like to, uh, you know, that should be held up more as a society. I agree. I mean, that's at the end of the day, like, no matter what comes with it, I know where I come from. You know what I mean? I, I'm from Lapeer, Michigan, originally out in the sticks in Michigan. You know what I mean? So um, that's why, you know, for me, when I've first seen him fight and just seen the interviews and, you know, obviously people have their opinions, but at the end of the day, he's 100 percent himself and honest. And uh, that's what I respect about him most. And he's made it literally from ground zero all the way to the pinnacle. So um, I can respect that. And that's why, you know, that's how I became a fan. And been watching him, you know, ever since, ever since I, the beginning. I try not to be a piece of shit. No, it's hard. It's no, hard it's, not to, trust me. I it's hard it. not to be a piece of shit like in life, dude. You know, it's, no, it's, it's, not, it's not. very, it's very, it's like the temptation. You go on the gram, like every time you open the gram, you get some like big titty Instagram model, like <laughs> trying to say what's up to you, you know? It's like, no, it's, real. it's so real. hard to be a good man. But it's nice to when you see like people who live it, who do it, they're also good men. You're like, you know what? 100%. I'm going to choose not to be a piece of shit today. That's all. <laughs> no, it's guys, real. It's real. You guys both have that in common. You're athletes at the highest level with the most success in your sports, but you also were open about the struggles that you face in your personal lives. Um, and not everybody, like you said, chooses to do that. But why was it important? And, and how did it make you feel after you shared those stories with the world? Um, you know, for me, I think it was after my first year I was sober um, that I wanted to go public and talk about it because... You know, the main thing for me was just about helping other people. Cause I know in that situation, like when I was going through what I was going through, like I felt like I was on an island. Like I was the only person on the, on the planet going through what I was, you know, dealing with. So um, when I decided, you know, I'm gonna go and just tell the world my story. Um, you know, like you said, like that's, that's about being a man. You know, at the end of the day, like people look at it as a sign of weakness to say, listen, I'm not perfect. I know, you know, I'm still struggling with it. It's every single day I gotta wake up, you know, I gotta worry about, my kid first, my, my wife, my daily struggles about staying sober, who do I need to connect with, who do I, you know, what work do I need to put in, how can I get better, like, that's my everyday battle and it's not easy and I'm still not perfect, I'm still trying to perfect what I do, so um, that's the mo- main thing for me is like, just showing other people, like, I didn't come into the league as a five-star recruit or I wasn't a top, you know, top guy, I was a fourth round pick, I had one offer out of college, like, you know what I mean? So I, it really, I had to work for everything I have. And that's why, you know, I respect athletes like Sean because um, he wasn't just given the golden ticket or, you know, he wasn't the biggest, baddest dude right out the gate. He had to work and earn it. And I still see him working the same way, you know, even though he's a champion, you know, and I'm not with him every day, but I know how he works and uh, he knows how I work. So that's why, you know, when you have that mutual respect, no, nah, no, nah, not like, at all. I mean, this dude spars every single day and you know, he kicked my ass. So I know, you know, fair. To your well. point, to your point of, of addiction. Yeah, you know, we are all addicted to some some things. I mean, I cannot tell you how many people I personally know that have an addiction to either be marijuana, alcohol, whatever it might be. Yeah, and it's so hard to admit that hey, I have I have this problem. I mean, I have my own addictions. I have my own struggles. It is so difficult. We live in the matrix. We talked about this earlier. Like, we live in the matrix where like. Society actively tries to numb you. They actively try to say, hey, when you wake up at four in the morning and you have to go lay rebar in LAX and you don't make enough money, even though you work an eight hour job with overtime, you don't make enough money to raise a family. So guess what? Now your wife also has to work a job. And you go, don't worry, the, 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 you, the, the school system will raise your kids. And, and all while well, they do that, they, they beat you into the fucking dirt and they say, hey, but you know what? You could try this new vodka, Jack Daniels. It's fucking great, goes down smooth. And uh-huh. it's so difficult in life not to want to reach towards, even if it's a social media addiction, 
even if it's a sex addiction. It is so difficult in life for the average man to, to go work his ass off, come home, and still not have enough. And all you got to do is take a drag, take a hit, take a drink, and for that split moment, the worries go away. Yep. It is, it's such a fucking struggle. And I, I truly, like, me and Max, we're in a place. I mean, he's in a way better place than me as an NFL money, right? That's a whole different category. Where he's going to take me out to dinner after this one. No doubt. But, uh, <laughs> but me and Max are in a place where we have so much less to worry about. Mm-hmm. We don't have to worry about paying our mortgage. We don't have to worry about paying our car payment. We don't have to worry about any of this. But yeah. the average man, I mean, these are, these are fucking struggles. Like, if you look at the, the average, the wage of, what is it, like 50K? Yeah. Could, you, could you imagine, like, 50K? Like, I read these numbers, and I see these stats, and I see people living, I see people struggling, struggling, and I'm like, man, I, I truly fucking, I feel for you guys. Yeah. And so when, when you see these people living good lives, good lives, not drinking, not cheating, not beating up their wives, being a good father, like the guy... I met a guy at um I met a guy in San Diego and he had two daughters mm-hmm. and he comes up to me and he and he starts like putting me on a pedestal like oh my God you're Sean Strickland I'm like dude are you kidding me like you work a hard job you're really? married you have two fucking beautiful daughter daughters that you are raising to be good people you have done way more in your life than I could ever do I am nobody to put on a pedestal you struggle I don't you make the world struggle I don't so. I really value when you take people like Max, where we spotlight these guys and we're in, they're living the life that we all should live. It's, it's fucking nice. And we don't, it's not enough, you know? And then and tell you what, it doesn't get the clicks. So Max going out there and, and you know, wearing his helmet and, and him saying that his struggles and he's a good man, he's a good father, that doesn't get the clicks. No. What would get the, the clicks? Shit, what would get no. the clicks if he's at a strip club throwing dollars? That would get the clicks. Yeah. But no one gives a fuck about doing the right thing. And this is the matrix we live in. They just, it's so fucking difficult to do the right things these days. But how mm-hmm. does your routine? Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you're, oh, no, you're talking real. You both have had. You both have had these different struggles that you've faced in your lives, but you both have these tremendous routines. You're both known for your work ethics in the gym. I mean, Max, how does that keep you on track to do both your football training, to do MMA training, and to have that as a part of your daily life to not just accomplish professional goals, yeah. but also to keep on track with the personal ones as well? Yeah, um, you know, for me, my, one of my mentors, uh, Scotty G, he always tells me all the time, he, he says sobriety is your superpower. Like, being able to be in my position, like you talked about, with all the distractions, all the craziness that comes with it, the money, the attention, um, being able to stay sober through all that is the number one thing that keeps me going and keeps me where I'm at. You know, if I was out there drinking a party and doing what, you know, majority of guys do, like, I don't even know where the hell I'll be right now. So uh, for me, that's what keeps me grounded is like, it's my superpower. I use it to my advantage. So when you talk about routine and you know, I have an addictive personality. I know I do. Most athletes and most, you know, people That's who have a skill. That's why you're where you're at, man. You're addicted yeah, to what you're, you do. I'm, a, I'm obsessed with it. You know what I mean? So I put that energy and power into positivity and good shit and training and waking up every single day every single day and challenging myself on a daily basis, like that's what has got me here. And so I use it, like I said, as like my superpowers. I know I have that addictive personality, but if I can do it every single day in a good way, um, I'm gonna be unstoppable, so. Funny enough, I, dude, I, I actually used you. So we used to train at 3.30, like, like it's middle Like in of the day. afternoon? Yeah, like, middle okay. of the day. And the, the yeah. thought process is that one, like a lot of guys that fight, they have jobs. Some mm-hmm. guys yeah. that work, mm-hmm. we fight more later in the day. So I DM Max, I was like, yo, Max, I'm trying to run a queue at the gym. I'm trying to get- <laughs> Oh, he's being honest. I'm trying to get Matt and Morty switched. Will you send me your training schedule? So he sends it over and I go to the gym and I'm like, bro, like best athlete in the world, you guys. He trains in the fucking morning. It's like, yeah. so I use, I use Max as my, my crew to get a uh, morning practice, bro. So I, pr- I, I appreciate that, man. That Always. was a good one. That's Always. huge. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. I didn't even, I, cause I remember you hitting me up about that. You're like, I got some guys, I'm asking questions around here. Cause he fights in that, it late. Like for me, if, if it's 3.30, like I'm at the house, either recovering, doing my, you know, I got the whole deal at the, at the house now. But you know, for me, if I'm, if I get up before anybody, like I already won right out the gate. So if I'm up at 5.25, I'm like, I know people are not doing this in the off season. The guys are partying or in Miami or doing whatever the hell they're doing. If I'm up at 5.25, I've already beat them you know, to the punch. So 
if I'm, if I'm done, if I work from six to 12, that's six hours of work by noon. I can go back home, put the Norma Tech boots on, recover my legs, ice tub, and just relax at the house, but I've already put in all the work. So I'm an early bird, I like that. And like, it's just a different type of challenge. You see, I'm an ask. So what I mean by that is when I say something, even if it's right, yeah. I can be like, hey guys, it's, it's three o'clock right now. I'm telling you, they'll be like, no, it ain't three o'clock, he's fucking wrong. So the moment I'm like, this guy, hey guys, Max. This is my example. Here's his right? DM, bro. This is what he says. Everyone gets on board. Like, oh yeah, Max Crosby, he's right. We should train another boy. Well, anyway, it's ask. all good. That's what I'm here for, bro. I got it's you. a beautiful example of how you two can both find positive things from what one another does. And, you know, you mentioned the word off season, Max, and in the off season, you, you guys got into the ring together. Yeah. Oh, three, yeah, no. three minutes sparring rounds. First of all, how did that even come about? Like, who was like, hey, let's spar each other because you are not the same weight. Yeah. Well, you I guys mean, need to understand when it was weight. Like, I used to spar Francis, and I could do well yeah. with Francis. When it comes to, like, our weight classes, it's very similar. Now, if he hits me, I'm f***ed. he hits me, you're going to see me, like, where am I, what day it is, welcome to CTE. You know, I'm going to have to go get some pills after this one. But, uh, <laughs> but generally, generally, like, I should have the advantage. Yeah. Uh, you know, I should. But, yeah. uh, no, he f***ing brought it, man. He brought it. He, he hit me with one. I think he made me bleed a little bit for a moment. I was like, this mother. Yeah, yeah. Pissed, that's where it turned yeah he turned to a, a wild pit bull after that no it was, he started it was kicking my ass but it was awesome like the literally the idea came from like they wanted to see me do some boxing training because i've been doing it for the last couple of years and they're like yeah do you have a sparring partner by chance or whatever i'm like well the guy i know best is sean strickland <laughs> but he's notorious for uh you know being a a wild sparring partner. Being a dickhead, you can yeah, say it. Yeah, no, it's dickhead. okay, so. You can say it. Yeah, you should have seen the looks I got when I walked in the building. Like, Forrest and all them, they're like, who are you sparring with? I'm like, Strickland. They just looked at me like, I fucked up. You know, excuse my language, but they're like, you don't know what you're getting into. So, we no, did he, our he thing, we got it. after he, it. He brought it. No, right. yeah, it was fun. I mean, we, we, we were swinging on each other. I mean, if I might have hit him a little too hard. If I was next to me, bro, I'd be stoked. Like, yeah. all right, let's hit No, I'll be fired up. I'll take him to any, any let's alley. Let's get this anywhere. GBI together. Oh, yeah, we'll get it done together, no question. <laughs> were there any different thoughts about one another after the sparring session that you gained after having the actual <laughs> physical experience? So let me ask you, let me, let me tell you something. When you're at, like, the top of the echelon, yeah. where he is, like, he's top of the echelon, you don't like to lose, you know, like when people yeah. like, so for instance, you won't see, a, you don't see a lot of cross training in sports because you only yeah. get up. Like if I go to yeah. the field, even though I say I'm going to put him on his ass, I'm probably going to get, you're going to see my helmet come on. I'm going to get fucked up. And then one day I want to do it. Yeah. But a lot of people don't like to show that vulnerability. Like I'm not the best in the world with this. I'm not the best in the world with this. So like, to me, like the uttermost respect for him to glove up and, and do the fucking man dance. Like, Fighting is one of the, like, the best things in the world. And for him to say, fucking, if you beat me up, great. And not only that, we did it on fucking camera. Yeah. Like, bro, no, yeah. it, it, like, it, takes, it takes a lot of fucking nuts yeah. to be in a person, in your position, and to go fight another man that I've been doing my entire life and to do goddamn well at. No, that's a fucking man. That's man shit right there. No, that's ultimate respect. You know, he's being nice about it, but he got after me. But it, he, he's 100% right. Like, when it comes to training, like, every off season. I always try to do at least two to three things that are like totally outside of the box. And like, I started that this past off season, obviously sparring with him, uh, you know, put myself in a scary situation, but you know, running 10 miles, even Hunter Campbell um, with the UFC, he challenged everybody in the room after one of the fights. He's like, going on a 10 mile run tomorrow, who's coming with me? And everybody just looked around and like, no, we're not going to that. And I was like, I'll do it. And they're like, you're insane, you're not doing it. And I ran 10 miles with them in Miami. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Like for me, 265 running down a beach, like I can't even tell you my body like literally shut down, but I finished, I did it. And you know, for me in my position, like I never want to get comfortable. Um, and I'm always, I'm always big on that. So if I can put myself in like a uncomfortable situation, uh, you know, I end up getting better, even though I get my ass woofed a little bit, but that's what, you know, that's what it, you know, it comes down but to. But you can see when you play, like when you play, you bring in energy that like, you're just not there. You're just not there, bro. Like when you no. play, you bring a fucking energy to it. No doubt. Like when you're tracking that ball, you could always see you. Like, you know, when when the fucking quarterback, whatever, is going out, and bro, you're like a little fucking Tasmanian devil, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you watch the other guys, my like maybe somebody gets stopped by a block, and they're just like, and they're chilling, but it's always you, bro. Just Blind. truth and nail ripping guys <laughs> down, like. 
Yeah. But that kind of like fire and that kind of drive is what fucking why you are the man you are, bro. No, Do you yeah. get pumped watching him play? Oh, I love it. Every time, dude, I'm always on the gram looking at your, your highlights, dude. It's fucking great. I love it. See, I'm but, the same way. I'm the same way. I watch every fight. But when you every watch, fight. but when you watch him play, you fucking see it. Yep. Like you'll watch guy. Like I'll watch you play, and I'll watch someone block you, and I'm like, dude, the ball. Like there's no fucking way you're going from there. <laughs> You're losing that guy, you're breaking from that guy, and you're getting that guy. And then like two seconds go by, or a second goes by, you fucking shuck him, you hit him, and you get and you're dragging the fucking QB down. I'm like, how the fuck? How the fuck did you do that? Yeah. No, that's how I feel like and it's funny, I'm not even just saying this, but like the first couple fights I've seen of him are in the apex, so you literally hear everything. And he's standing in front of this dude and he's like, come on, motherfucker, <laughs> hit me in the face, hit me in the face, punch hard. He's like, why won't you go down? Yeah. And I'm like, I legitimately, I swear to God, like you can ask my teammates, any other guys in the league. I mean, there's been clips that have been released of me talking shit, but like being able to really stand there, like there's guys that can talk shit when they're up by two touchdowns yeah. and like, yeah. But when you're at zero, zero, or it's the beginning of the game, you could look the man in the eyes that you know you're going to war with all day and be like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm, I'm coming. And that's, I literally, I got that from him. Just Jack, being, that guy named Jack, he was such a, Jack, yeah, yep. he was such a solid guy. Uh, I think he was a paratrooper. And like, I mean, he was pretty like high up in uh, English military. I, I told him, I was like, bro, like, I love you, dude. You have a war, but you spent eight, 10 years of your life fighting for a country. Yeah. What do you think I was doing? I was being a white trash motherfucker getting the shit kicked out of me. So it's like, you know, tough as nails. Like he was the kind of guy that he would have died in that ring. And I fucking had so much respect for him. Yeah. We're, we're still friends to this day. We still talk, we still keep in touch. I love That's that. Dope. That's dope. But you guys have so much in common and you so much respect for the work ethic that is put in. And it seems like you take a lot from one another's performances. And I know Max, that you train during the season twice a week, um, stand up striking. Yep. And in the off season, you're training all the time. Yep. But you've talked about what a benefit that really is to the pass rush and what you're able to do and why these accolades keep stacking up for you. I mean, what is it about striking that translates to the football field? Yeah, I was just explaining this uh, literally earlier, but it's all very similar. Uh, I mean, fighting is distance, hand, you know, hand speed, timing, uh, footwork, movement. I mean, it's all direct correlation to pass rush. It's all very similar. You know, for us, it's about having fast hands, knowing how, you know, if you have a, a tackle with super long arms, I got to know exactly the distance of where he's going to hit me. So, like, it's all those little details that boxing has helped me a ton with. And I feel like, you know, I've done it for two and a half years now, and it's like, it's helped take my game to a whole nother level. And I don't even realize it because I'm doing it a lot more. But, like, just like my timing and hand speed and everything, it's like, it becomes a lot more natural. So, Pass rush is literally, pass rush and boxing are like very, very similar in a lot of ways. So I've I put that into my training just to, you know, challenge myself and improve in that way. On the flip side, is there anything that you do for your football training or your football regimen that Sean could instate into his life to maybe get some advantages Touch of the octagon? Maybe once I mean, Yeah, I mean, work, I mean, work out a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, not, just, just, not just fight. Yeah, not just spar every day. No, but I feel like I'm not fighting know, for I'm not I'm not fighting for my opponent. I'm fighting the demon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's what you know. For, I feel like football is just like the ultimate discipline. I mean, like I've done it since I was a kid. I've been playing since second grade when I was first even allowed to play tackle. So like I played my whole life, and it's you know, it's, it's all about structure. And I know he's, he's big on routine and stuff like that. He makes, he jokes around a lot, but I know how regimented he is and what he does on a daily basis. And like, that's what I feel like with football, what, what could help, you know, even with MMA or any sport in general is like the routine and the, the meal prep and, you know, the weight cutting, be disciplined with how you weight is. Not just, just not going around and just, hey, you want to spar? Yeah, you want to yeah. fight and you beat fight each other up? Guy? No, you know, there's a reason why he's a, he's a world champion. That doesn't happen by accident. Um, you know what I mean? I'm not the most God-gifted, talented, quickest, fastest dude. He's not that either. You know what I mean? It's Boy, quite, athletic specimen. Yeah, I'm an athletic yeah. freak. But no, it's like, it's real. You know, at the end of the day, if to get to that level, like, you get into the UFC, it's a cool thing. But you to continue to grow and get better as you get in is incredible. And, like, that's how I felt, like, when I got to the league. You know, there's a lot of guys that get drafted. They're like, I made it to the league. I'm good. And for me, it was like, no, nah, this is, like, this is the beginning. You know what I mean? And so that's what pushes me It's just trying to find – that next level I can tap into. And, you know, I know he's the same way, like, but, when it comes down to but it. But there's something different about you, and I don't know what it is, but, like, and I, I don't know, and you meet it with people. But, like I said, when you're, when you see the ball pass you, <laughs> yeah. you're always on it. Yeah. Even though, like, even though when, like, even though it's fucking gone, dude, you're always 
can, you're always on it. You're always fighting for it. And I don't know what mentally gives you that, but I'm very much yeah. the same way where it's like, I love what I do. Like there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing I want to do more than fight a man. Yeah. It's like, it's my peace. It's my like, it's my happiness. So when I watch you play football, man, it's yeah. no different. You're just, you're so hyper focused on the task. Yeah. You know, 100%. Like, but it's also the sense of clarity. Like it's the, when I'm training and fighting, I'm not thinking about anything else. Nothing. I'm not thinking about Nothing. my life. I'm not thinking about my, my depression. I'm not thinking about things I must do. I'm just in this fucking pure moment of like hyper focus. And it's like one of the best things ever. Yeah. It's you at your, your purest form. That's why you're obsessed with it. That's why I'm obsessed with it. That's why you can't get enough of it. And you're always trying to find that next, no matter what it is. He's a champion. It doesn't matter what's next. That's what's for me. I know I've, I've set records year after year and for personal records, um, but that's not enough. I know where I want to be. I want to be the best. Um, and that's, you know, that's what pushes me every day. It's like that obsession, like he says, running to the ball. Like it's the littlest details that matter. And that's how I try to separate myself because I could sit backside and chill and not run to the ball. But like when you watch Super Bowls, who wins the Super Bowl every year, it's always comes down to like one or two crazy plays where someone's making a who's sprinting after the ball and falls on a fumble. Like that's the shit that matters. And if you have a lot of guys around you doing the same thing and feeding off your energy, then you're going to have a chance to win. And that's what you know I try to do for my team. Being at the top of the mountain in your individual sports, obviously you know what it takes to find success in your own realm. But does knowing one another give you more respect for each other's respective sports and what goes into it? And it's not just, oh, they show up on Saturdays and fight or they just show up on Sundays and play. You, you know, I mean, like, my dream before I got kicked out of elementary school, you know, I mean, I've, I've been kicked out of a lot of schools. Elementary school? I thought it was high school. Well, I've been kicked out of a lot. <laughs> okay, all right. Both. <laughs> started with elementary school. All right. It was homeschooled in elementary school, went back in junior high, got kicked out of homeschool. All right. Got kicked out. But my dream, dude, my dream was to be an NFL player. It was like the only thing in life I loved. When I was eight years old, like I literally waited for football season. No, yeah. I just waited for it, you know. So it's like, and it went a weird way. Like Max doesn't know this, but like, bro, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a fanboy, but it's like, you know, what you do was my dream going. Yeah, that was my dream. Watching you, watching you play, that's what I. That's all I wanted to be when I was a fucking kid. So like. There is a sense of admiration from that. And not only that, he, the, best, the best at what he does. I mean, he breaks records. He, he's probably one of the biggest known players in the NFL right now. He probably is the biggest known player in the NFL right now. I mean, everybody knows Max Crosby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes, it goes both ways. I mean, like you said, like, I feel at my purest, my most complete form when I'm playing football. I know that's like... When I watch fighting, like football is 11 people. You got to rely on a lot of different people for a lot of things to happen. When you watch fighting, it's one dude in there with another one, and that's it. It's I watch you play. It just makes it look that's... like it's all you most plays. <laughs> Every, no. There might be a lot of people, no. bro, but there's always Max running no. across the field. The ultimate disruptor. Uh, I try yeah. my best. I try my best. But, no, it's like that's why I love fighting so much because, you know, you break it down in a simpler form. It's, it's pass rush. It's the tackle versus me. All right, it's me or him. That's it. And that's why I train the way I train. I know I can go longer than the guy in front of me um, because of all the work I put into it. And that's why I feel like him, like he just walks people down. Like he literally walks down I, and he's yeah, not going to get just, tired. I just like to hurt people. Yeah, he likes to hurt people. He walks people down. He doesn't get tired. I mean, yeah. that's, that's football. And it's the same thing. It's people like, are like pinatas. The yeah. more you hit him, the more candy comes out. You just want to keep it. Just, just over and over and over. Him, well, yeah. he'll have a chance, you know, in just a couple of days oh, yeah, to see up. that plan in action. You know, Max, you are a staple at UFC fights in the off season. You are always there. You understand the sport yep. so well. But when you watch Sean fight, and as you see him just a couple of days before he puts his world title on the line, I mean, what goes through your mind? I just get fired up for him. I know how big it is. Um, you know, it's not like football. It's a full season where, you know, we play every single week. Like fighting is, all right, you fight every, maybe t twice a year, three times a year. So, you know, long training camp leading up to it, the biggest fight of your life. You know, you're defending your title. So I already know there's the beef behind it. There's drama behind it. And I fucking cannot wait to watch it. And I know he's going to be at his best. So you know I'm fired up. I never really like focus on the win. I just want to fight. Just want to fight. Like, I just want to get in there and I want to like, like even my fucking face right now. Yeah. You know how fun it is when you're, when you're sparring and you get a hit and you feel blood drip down your face. 
Like it makes you feel like you're alive. It makes you feel like a primitive I'm alive. Like I, I remember right. I was uh, sparring Edmund, eating through a hook, and I got a knuckle right across my nose, and I start bleeding. I'm like, at this moment, I'm at my happiest. <laughs> so it's never really about winning or losing. It's just about being a fucking man and going in and just letting the hands go. So yeah. I'm excited, man. I'm gonna be stoked you're watching it, bro. I mean, like, no way. Life, life is good. Life is good. I can't wait. I mean, in Toronto. It's gonna be, it's gonna be insane. Life is good, life is good. It's yeah. gonna be great. Before I let you go, what is it gonna take, Sean, to get you to do some sort of practice with Max? How do we make this happen? Safely, there is no make, safely. There is no make it happen. I'm gonna pad up. Yes. I'm gonna pad up. We're gonna fucking line up. What's the best drill we should, what, what's, the, what's the drill? How do, do, like I, how do I test my drill. <laughs> How Oklahoma do I test Oklahoma drill. What's Old Oklahoma school, drill? Oklahoma. Tell the people. Tell you the people. start on your, this is like peewee football shit. You lay on your back. Your heads are facing each other. You blow the whistle. You get up and you run full speed at each other. Whoever goes Let back. Let me tell you, bro. Yeah, loses. Any day of the week, we're fucking doing it. Yeah, we're Let's doing it. Let's go. When we don't have a fight in yes. the near no, future. No, I'll do it right now. Oh, Let's my God. Go. Right now. Okay. Okay. The okay. Best. Well, I, on that note, hey. I will let you both go. It would be a goddamn honor and privilege to fucking get put on my ass by you. But I'll tell you what, dude. I appreciate that. I might, not, I might be a middleweight, you guys, but fucking, I'm bringing the fucking freight train. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are. I just want to commend both of you on the success that you've had in your individual sports. It is so fun to have this conversation. See you two interact. Two mega athletes in Las Vegas. You have so much in common, and thank you for letting me be a part of this conversation. Thank you, Megan. And thank I you. know, Max, that you will be watching when Sean competes at UFC 297 in Toronto on January 20th. To the death. <laughs> Let's do it.